It made all the difference in the world. I don't know if you got that or not. So let's pack this baby up for tonight. Alright my friends. I'm going to attempt to put these chains on. These chains. On that snowblower. And uh, when you're doing chains. Car, snowball, snowblower. Loader. It doesn't matter what it is. You've got to make sure at first. That the chains aren't. None of the links are flopped. For example, now you'll see along here that every chain link comes through the main tire chain, every second link the same direction. Right? And you want this part on the tire so it'll go up like that and it'll go up like that so these guys don't catch on the rocks and spring up. And there's also a second thing to consider. Tire rotation. So when you're hooked, when you're around the tire, when you're around, can you, I think you guys can see, when you're around the tire, we'll, we'll just do the second link, because that's probably more likely. This loops around like that. It's kind of like one of those chain things you got when you were a kid that were a puzzle. You want the chain, I would want the chain to travel in this direction, so that nothing can catch this and undo it. But that's a little harder said than done, because both chains are identical. So one of them has to go on the other way with this clip at the back. Now, you have to kind of use your... Ooh, you seem to want it, right? Might be a little long. Now while we're here, and I am going to lift this back off and put it underneath the tire if I can. I got a little chunk of wood. It's all I need. I'll probably be taking this off. It might have to be cut. We don't know that. Pardon me, I'm in front of you, I don't. Good. Well, that's not a bad first effort. We might have to take one set out, I don't know. You know, that's not bad. Let's just do it up loose. And I'll just get you in here and show you how this is done up. So you'll notice that the, the, the main, the, the traction part of the chain is looped under so these little guys don't get caught on the rocks. This chain looks like it's a half an inch or an inch too big, but I'm going to clip this onto the third one. One, two, three. All right? Whoops, we can probably do that. And then this folds back on itself and clips onto there. Now that is obviously too loose, right? Because we still have some slack under here yet, eh? So we may have to take one link, one, one strap off and cut a few links. Now what some guys do, and it's totally legit, is once you get it on tight, you put 
bungee cords on these to keep them from flopping. But I think I want this clasp to be on here, about here. Might, so I might take this one off. So that's that's pretty much what we got. So disconnect this and cut this off by two. If you have extra of these, you can just take a tie wrap and fold that back like that. So once again, we'll just undo that, like that. Right? I'm going to think about that. Maybe you can see. I'm just undoing these links. They're, they're pretty bendy. They take some abuse. Now, you can buy tire chain pliers. Can you believe that? But in tire shops, there are some guys that do nothing but this. This, I think we got. Almost, eh? I might just punch down on that. Oh, so close. Any kind of a plier with an angle does it, right? <clears throat> there we go, that'll come down. You start dropping stuff, you know you're getting somewhere. Okay? One! Gonna work, excuse me. You might just bring you guys down a tad. Oh, I see. We'll start the bend with these. See, the more you do, the smarter you get. No, I would not cut this part with a chain. With a, sorry, with, with a chain with a uh, an angle grinder because uh, you don't know if the whole thing's going to work or not. There we go. Got that one. And I'm reaching around you. Okay, don't throw that away. I got a, I got a pail of chains that don't fit anything in the shed. Okay, so today, now I'm going to redo this. On the fourth link. Now there is going to be a small gap. Hey, hey, Ralph, book. So we're going to go right back to here. Maybe even here. Because we have slack all the way around. Right? Okay, that's pretty good, you guys. Believe it or not. Now that's how much extra slack we have now. Whoops. Okay, so I did this one up. It's right on the very last one, too. Eh? And uh, there's still a bit of slack, but now we can play. Tire valve stuff. Uh, I want to see how much air they've lost before I let the air out. Oh, 
I think I put 15 in here, 15 to 20. Oh, well, we're still holding 25. Let's see. So now. Now, do I have enough bungee cords to do this? Just playing right now. Nope. Oh. Okay, I can go up one more on these. I'm going up to the last one just like on this side. Good. That should tighten us up some. I'm not happy with using the very last link like that. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Hey, that's getting tighter. I'm liking it. So this clips on to here. Well, let's make sure we got it right here. Good. some air in them. Have we got air? Yes. If the compressor comes on, we will uh, deal with that. Yeah, let's put some air in there and see if this tightens up at all. You guys are watching? I'm going to make sure here. Okay, we should feel this tighten up a little bit with air in the tire. Oh yeah. That's really quite good. We're going to school for the other side as well, right? So 20, I'd say, I'd say 20 pounds is probably okay for these guys because they're, they're old and they're going to leak. It's pretty darn good. Now I might just take this, tire's going to turn this way, and tie wrap that back to there. Or even across. No, I don't want to pull on it. I'm going to tie wrap that back to there. And I don't even know if I'm going to need, need, uh, what do you call it? A bungee cord? We'll try one bungee. Now, of course, 
I'm just about out of these. But this is how I do it. You got the clamp there, so you can go here and you can clamp it from that direction, or you can clamp it that way, right? But I like to go something like that, and then through down over here. And then back up, well, I guess to there. That's not bad. And then we're going to take this one and just tie wrap this chain back. And use good tie wraps on this. My friends, there's a difference between good tie wraps and crummy tie wraps. Eh? Believe me, that chain's not going to hurt anything. Lovely. And just for your training, the tie wrap should be cut so that it doesn't cut you. Yeah. I'd almost rather try this. We're getting tight. You can do something like that. Come on. Well, I guess I'm going to have to... Man, you don't want to screw anything up. There. It's pulling from one, two, three, four points. I think I should get an A for that. No? Now I should get an A for that, eh? A? And then of course, right after we're done, we're going to change the oil and make a heck of a mess. You're laughing. You're laughing, Thomas. Hey, i got to go get some lunch. And then we got to do numero dos. Number two. Numero deux. Au revoir, mes amis. Goodbye, my friends. Adios, mi amigos. Yes, I just tie wrapped the back. So I could cut this extra piece of chain off here, but everything is so new, I don't want to do that, right? There we go. All right, so this is where the dilemma is. If I want the quick release portion to be on the outside of the tire, it has to go on the other way for rotation. But I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm just going to do it because uh, this is a snowblower, not a four-wheel drive farm truck. So again, I have too much uh, slack if I leave this one link in. So we're going to just undo that. And lay this down. I'm going to take the link out and just do it up. And we'll do the other side. So we'll have a little fun while you're still on camera here. Oh! The other one was 21 pounds. And it's been sitting for three months. So, same. So let's take the air out of this bad boy. Bad boy. And I'll, I'll just t take this, this uh, link out of the chain and we'll come back. So on occasion I have had to go and do a different, like on the back I might do five links spare and on the front I would do four just to get some tightness, but this is going to work really well. Oh, we need our little Valverunu who's it in there, right? Eh? So these both have their air, no air lost in the in the uh, three short months I had them sitting there, so that's good enough for me. And uh, I don't need tubes, I don't need uh, green slime. All I've got to do is take this up to 20 pounds. I know that's a little high. That's all right. Isn't that tighten up nice? 
Now, when you're putting chains on in the field, you'll never be able to let the air out of the tires and do all of that stuff. Tie wraps again. It's kind of hard on good tie wraps. But think of the overall cost. That'll hold them. I know I should cut that chunk of chain off. Right now everything's new. And uh, Good. <clears throat> Cut them off flush so you don't nip your, nip your knuckles on them. I know. Me talking about safety. Now this is a little bit longer of a bungee cord. But hey, what the heck. back down around to there and then I did this on the other one you guys didn't see I just bent that bent that over a little bit and this one a little bit so all this does is as the chain loosens up it just sucks the front of it back there you are to me that looks beautiful All depends on how much this bounces, eh? Oh, there's the missing valve stem. I had one laying around. Valve stem cover! Excuse me. Okay. So now, the only thing left with this machine, except for the main belt, which I'm waiting for, is to clean it up, wipe it down, of course, and uh, take a little bit of paint polish to some of the scratches here. I might shoot some green rust linoleum on there, but hey, uh, we're there. <coughs> oh, let's just. I set the scraper height too. Can't do it all for you. Now, I'm just going to clean it up because it does. It's got grease marks and fight marks and half of my blood of on here is on here. I should be like Ken and just take my blood and pour it on stuff. Ken, I'm just giving you a rough time. Hope you're okay, buddy. Now, let's get it cleaned up. Okay, here, it'll be fun.